Okay, so y'all suck at coloring. But don't worry, because your mother swallows that coloring. But don't worry, for I am here to help you get good at the most fulfilling, pivotal, yet diabolically challenging facet of art. Coloring. I'ma suck that color sickness right out of your face and tell you some tips and tricks so somebody like yourself can fix your dull paintings. And lucky for you, I got a method to get better at coloring without that boring art study crap. Yuck. <laughs> I didn't leave academia for art just to do some slightly prettier homework. Drawing a bajillion forearms isn't gonna get you better at art. It will just make you burn out faster than Armin in that one Attack on Titan episode. Alrighty, time to reveal my secrets. For this art trick, all you gotta do is... Look. Menacingly! And by menacingly, I mean look closely. Now, I don't mean to discriminate against farsighted people, but when trying to get good at colors, the first step is to actually look at some nice colors. My number one app of choice for that is Pinterest. Now, this is what my Pinterest board looked like before. Its color range isn't doing me any favors, and it's mostly just a hot female at the center of the focus. But as you scroll up, you can start to see photo references where the colors just start dancing, slapping you in the face telling you, look at me. The color variation in these pieces are unique and not the bland, typical studio lighting. Basically, I'm showing you that there's levels to reference, okay? Some of you might be saying that, oh, Pinterest doesn't recommend me these type of portraits. <laughs> Stop! It's really simple to get them. First, you want to create a new board. So find your first image, literally one. Don't care if you search for it by typing female, intense dynamic lighting, smooth skin, supple fingers, suggestive hair, <laughs> like some weird AI generated art prompt. All you should care about is finding a super high dynamic lighting scenario, something really over the top, which should look something like this. And uh, please ignore the title. The internet is a dangerous place that we must navigate with caution, ladies and gentlemen. Anyways, click save, then create the board and name it appropriately. Then scroll down to more like this section and keep adding really unique lighting scenarios. And you need to be really picky for the first couple of references. No mid looking lighting. After I got like four references, I refreshed my homepage and bam, way better references for color studying. Okay, now that we got a good catalog going, find a photo with great color transition. And it's exactly how it sounds. A photo with like a great color change from blue to red or yellow to orange, etc, etc. That's what I mean by look. Menacingly! Okay, now we actually have to do a little better of an art study. What's that? You're saying that I said that studying is for children? For subservient fools? Number one, that's cap. Not even true. Don't even know where you got that from, you gaslighter. Anyways, <laughs> with the negativity out of the way, let's go shaft ourselves with some not so painful art studying. Looky here, I've imported that one image from Pinterest, and I'm color picking that cool transition on her face that I see, and I'm making a gradient out of it. Then I make the image a reference by clicking the wrench icon, going to the canvas, reference, and importing the image. Then I'm basically going to recreate the gradient I see. Since the colors are right above you, this should be the easy part, I hope. You can then separate out your gradient and compare. Okay, not bad. Now you're going to remove the color pick dots and do the exact same thing, just with the reference this time. Remember, no color picking you silly scoundrels! It's your own learning you're messing with if you color pick. I want you to pay attention to what color I pick versus the final color that ends up on the gradient. Most of the time, I'm not actually picking the final color, but rather I'm picking a color that will mix into the color I want. For example, look at how light this blue is, and then after we blend it together, we actually get this more lavender color. And that's one of the biggest problems I see with people who struggle with colors. They have a final color in mind, but don't understand that most of the time, you're not going to get a simple color transition like this, and that the color transition that looked the best together often bleeds into the grays and the in-between color zones. Back to the gradient. As you can see, I wasn't as close to the original reference this time, since it's a bit harder. For some added ticklage, you can cut the transition shape from your reference like I did here and add your gradient onto the shape. This little exercise is great because over time you're flexing that color muscle and learning things like how to make a red colder, whether or not you should use a saturated blue or a very gray red on this spot, if this blue is not cool enough. Loser. Basically, you're learning color temperature way faster than if you were to do a full-blown painting. Plus, because you've picked such great references, I hope, you're also downloading tons of unique color harmonies into your brain that you can apply to other paintings. 
Anyways, after I finished, it was fun to compare how my version looked versus a reference. It's like a reward for doing an art study. You think it's easy, but don't judge this until you give it a try. It's honestly pretty stress-free, and it's fun to compare the final results. Here I did one with a lot more subtle but equally sexy color transition. So yeah, don't just do the super obvious color transition all the time. Make sure to pick the quiet one too sometimes. All color transitions are beautiful in a way. Remember that. Putting that all together now, I decided to recreate this reference, but really I'm only focusing on the color harmony. I'm not really paying attention to anything else. I'm really only painting the other parts out of obligation, and not because I care for it. Sort of like how your parents raised you! <laughs> Anyways, the main focus is executing this blue shadowy thingy on her face. And now that I got to that part, did you notice it? It went by really fast, but look here. I initially started with this blue color, but after color picking the same blue looking area, I'm suddenly teleported into the red part of the color wheel. It's magic. Crazy, right? It turns out that a desaturated red will look cool beside warm colors. <laughs> okay, I could spend another hour or two trying to finish this piece, but I ain't got the time for that. I gotta touch grass. I've done what I come to do. I've painted the color harmony. I've looked menacingly and closely. I've received the knowledge and it's time to dip from this piece. Or if you're feeling extra studious, you can go and paint another reference and speedrun getting good at colors. You know what they say, gotta create some cheeks to learn all the techniques. For real though, if you put a little bit more effort into the coloring and spend some more time, here is what a final piece could look like. I thought I executed on the colors way better on this piece than the green one. I mean just look at that neck, very attractive. You know, I'm more familiar with the red-gray harmonies than the purple and yellow harmonies, you know what I'm saying? It also helps that I actually went ahead and finished the piece, so yeah. This could be you if you eat your coloring vegetables and look menacingly. Alright, those are all the color techniques I got. If you liked the video, go subscribe, you silly dog. Or you can go watch some of my other videos. Bye-bye. Oop, I almost forgot. Give me your forehead.